Well, hey, you're probably wondering how hybrid cars work. Well, first, it begins with the beginning. The world's first hybrid car is not the hybrid car you would see today. It's not a Toyota car. It's not made from. It was actually. It was actually invented in 1900. In the 1900s, it was called the Porsche Semper bike. Right. Porsche Semper. The world's first electric cars were built back at the turn of the century, when it was unclear whether EVs or gas-powered cars would pick up. The combustion engine quickly become, became the king, of course. Most folks forgot about hybrids and EVs, or even running. And besides, they didn't really have electricity back then, since there weren't a well outlets with electricity running through them in their houses, so nobody really cared. And people who had electric cars, most likely the extremely rich ones, like millionaires only owned electric cars since they were so expensive. It was pretty neat. The PR gimmick for a Porsche roll out an exact replica of the first car of the So, it was, well, let's just say it wasn't that great. It was mediocre. This car was a remade version. It had a tiny battery capacity. So that means the battery isn't even that good. It's not even that good. It's very... Let's just say, okay. But one thing which is really good about this hybrid car was the fact that it was the first hybrid car. So there was so much excitement about this car. So yes, let's take a look at how hybrids actually work. Since hybrids, all we know, the battery and the gas engine. So here it is. There's the thermal system or the cooling, the DC converter, power electronics controller, internal e combustion engine and exhaust system, fuel filler, fuel tank, traction battery, electric traction motor, electric generator, transmission, and battery. So what does the thermal system do? It's basically a cooler. Basically, batteries get hot since Batteries are outputting so much energy that the, the, the case that the battery is in is getting very hot. And in order to retain the battery level, since when things get hot, they slow down. For example, when a CPU gets very hot, the CPU's clock speed will go down. And so that's the same with batteries. If batteries get too hot, their capacity or their output will go down. And in order to stop that, there's something called thermal system cooling. It's basically a CPU fan in a sense. So then there's the power electronics con controller. This is basically the power system. For example, this thing over here manages when to use battery power and when to switch to gas. For example, let's say you're cruising around town at 30 to 20 miles an hour. Your battery system is going to work. But let's say you take your hybrid car to a race, which is most likely never going to happen. But let's just say you take it to a race and quickly you accelerate super fast. If the battery does that, then the battery will explode and kill everyone inside the car. So, Polytrics, electronics controller will give the power terrain over to the gas engine. And well, the gas will take care of that. But whenever cruising at a steady speed, the, the, the hybrid system or the battery system will take over. So yes, that's it. There's the exhaust system, which is obviously from any gasoline engine, there's the exhaust, or that's how the heat dissipates from the gas engine. Just like how there's a thermal controller over here, gas engines cool themselves by having an exhaust since the air is going at such a force that it just goes away. 
So that's how. It, and then there is the fuel filling, which is obviously how the food goes to the gas engine. Just like there is an outlet, as you can see, there is a little hole here. There, that's for the outlet. For example, all battery engines or hybrid systems need an outlet or some hybrid systems have an outlet and some don't for example the new e for example if it has an outlet for battery to flow in through a charger if it has a charger the car is going to be more efficient since it's based it can basically act as a battery powered car and a fuel powered car but if it's just a normal hybrid car there's no outlet your engine is the one who has to power this thing up. Or for example, let's say your hybrid system is low, the battery in the hybrid system is low. And you're cruising at 20 miles an hour. Your, your gasoline engine has to take over, making it less fuel efficient. When the battery engine could be doing that, fuel system is doing that. And at the same time, it's charging this thing up whenever it's decelerating. So, but on the other hand, if we take like the EV powered system or the prime version, there's an outlet here. And so when the battery goes low, you can always go home and charge it, or you could charge it at your nearby charging station. And so this stops that from doing that. So when you're cruising around in 20 miles an hour, your battery, your hybrid, hybrid system is gonna take over. So you're always running at the full capacity. Then there's the traction battery pack which is, well, basically the battery. And the transmission is basically the transmission, just like how there's a gear system for gasoline engines, there's a gear system for batteries too. Since there's one motor over here and one motor over here. Basically, it chooses whether to use one motor or two motors. And the newer prime version have four motors. But, or even Tesla's, since it's a full battery-powered car, will have up to 10 motors, that's right. That's why it's able to, that's why the roaster is able to decelerate from 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds. You would have a battery throughout the whole bottom of the car. Yes. That is how it works. Thank you. Bye.